What's up guys, it's Pooch Cake. I'm back. I've seen a video going to shoot my second video of the day, actually. Or you might be seeing this one first. Uh, if you're seeing this one first, second one's going to be an in-person autograph recap. But have a few weeks of mail, just stuff that I've accumulated that I've neglected to show as usual. But haven't really had a lot in, and now I have enough to finally make a video for you guys. So, have some TTM set pickups, uh, a couple really nice book pickups, and an in-person autograph uh, signing recap. So, Let's jump right into it. I will start with uh, just like non-certified signed cards. All TTMs or set pickups. First one, uh, TTM from the easiest autograph you will ever get in your life, Pat Neshek. Guy's a signing machine. I don't think I have to say really too much on him. Pretty much you could send him 100 cards to the team address or his P.O. box and he'll get them back to you in about a week. So sign one of one on his new Astros card. Had it laying around so figured why not. Next, picked up one, two, three, four set cards for I believe like two bucks each. So couldn't pass it up for the price of Jorge Lopez, Alberto Tirado, Tirado, Bobby Bradley, and Nathaniel Delgado. So I'm sitting roughly at about 80 of 200 on that, almost at the halfway point, so really excited. Next, have a really cool TTM success for the 1991 Donruss set. Not every day that you can mail a guy three cards from the same set and put up a three spot on your set, but that's exactly what happened with former twin Brian Harper. Not Bryce's dad, though his name is a BH. His signature looks like Bryce Harper, and his last name is Harper. Uh, no, I'm not sure if he's not related to Bryce, but definitely not his father. His father is Ron Harper. Signed his base, an MVP insert, and a Diamond Kings insert. So really nice. Uh, three from him coming back in about a week sent to the team that he is a minor league coach of, the Iowa Cubs. Next, I have two book pickups. First one, just grabbed dirt cheap in Autographs 101, was this uh, Phil Jackson, the last season. You can tell it's a little roughed up. Why is my camera not focusing? Do we see that? Hold on. There we go. Uh, as everything just falls off the couch. And you know what? I'm going to keep going because I'm already two minutes in. Phil Jackson, the last season, uh, signed very nicely on the title page, if I could find it, in a black ballpoint pen. The more I looked at it, the more I thought it was pre-printed, but you could tell that he was pressing down. So definitely a Phil Jackson autograph. If it's auto-penned, it's auto-penned. I got it dirt cheap, so not complaining at all. But I do know he is known to sign his books a lot. So really nice autograph from one of the greatest players and coaches of all time. That's my bird. If anybody wants a bird, let me know. I'll trade him for, like, a Pat Neshek autograph. <laughs> Next, um, as I'm sure many of you autograph collectors know, in November... Barnes & Noble put a Derek Jeter signed books on pre-sale, just fiction pieces that he was writing, and the giant fiasco unfolded with that. Long story short, I wound up ordering 22 of them for the purposes of making a lot of cuts and, yes, even flipping a couple for a profit. But I get a call from Barnes & Noble one day saying, we're sorry, we had a big inventory miscount, Essentially what they did was they didn't cap off the books that they were selling signed. So Derek Jeter signed X amount and there were several, several thousands that went unfulfilled. And if you ordered anywhere between one and 300, like some people did, uh, you got one free book. So to make up for my 22 when I was splitting one with a couple of friends, I'm going to have to reimburse him. I did get one Derek Jeter book and as a Yankees fan, I'm not going to complain about this at all. It's his newest book entitled Change Up. It's just a short, it's like a short fiction. But sure enough, it's signed by Gita. And a nice black ballpoint pen. There was a lot of speculation in Autographs 101 that these were auto-penned. But uh, those rumors were put to rest because every single one that came out looked different. And you could tell it's live ink. It was signed with a human hand. So if this isn't Jeter's autograph, which it obviously is, considering I have 10 authentic examples in the room next to me, it was signed with a human hand. So it's Jeter. Uh... Not sure what I'm going to do with this. I, I want to cut. I, I think I would cut it and put it with either a 16 by 20 of him getting his last hit or uh, the flip play. But then I know that one day I'll probably be able to get that signed. So I'm just going to leave it as is probably. A nice piece to the uh, Jeter PC. And lastly, I was able to meet the day after finals ended. Yes, I am a free man for the summer and it cannot feel any better. Banged out another 4 this semester. Not to brag, but halfway through and I've maintained my biggest goal of college so really happy about that really happy that I get to really enjoy these next three months treated myself to a goose gossage signing 
It was only $25 in autograph. I saw them and I called them to make sure it wasn't a mistake because it was a Steiner signing and they said, no, it was 25. So had Goose Gossage sign three things for me, including my Yankee Stadium 16 by 20, very nicely in the sky. This top load is filthy. So if you guys see anything, it's just that. I need to get a new one. Uh, he signed my dad's Thurman Munson 16 by 20, very nicely in silver. Bucky Dent was there too, and him and Bucky Dent actually talked to me for a solid five minutes about this piece. They said Munson looks really young, and it was probably from his rookie or sophomore year, but really, really cool. And lastly, the inscription cost the same price as the autograph, but I had him sign my Yankee Stadium seat back and inscribe Hall of Fame 2008. I don't know why the camera keeps going out of focus, I'm sorry. And had him inscribe Hall of Fame 2008. Little trick, I figured if I was going to be paying 20 bucks for an inscription... I asked him to write it out, and he did, and it looks awesome. So here's what the seat looks like right now from uh, reading like a book. You have Don Larson, Tino Martinez, Goose Gossage, and Whitey Ford. So coming along very nicely, as I've said many times, the plan is only to put high-end names on this. The lowest, name, the lowest end name is going to be Don Larson, but he's just a quintessential piece of Yankee history, so I decided to put him on it to begin with. So pretty much... You can look out one day for like Joe Torre, Reggie Jackson. My goal is to have this middle shank be all Hall of Famers. So we got to put Reggie Jackson, Joe Torre, Mariano, and Jeter on there eventually. Yeah, I'm saying that like I have the extra two grand to spend. The top's just going to be all Yankees who are notorious for their career. Guys like Paul O'Neill, Tina Martinez, who's already on there. Jorge Posada, Andy Pettit. Same thing with the bottom if I decide to add to it because it is a darker blue. But... This is going to be look really nice. It's not going to be like the stadium poster that has a lot of middle-end names and low-end names like the likes of Greg Nettles and Chris Chambliss and uh, Raleigh Sheldon, people like that. So it's going to look really nice done. All right, I'm going to start stop rambling. I have a wedding to get ready for. I'm not getting married. I'm only 20, and I have schools.